<sighs> well, given that the friendos aren't around, I mean, we already did one draft tonight, but maybe we should step in and do another. <laughs> maybe we should. We know the Providence Bruins are already out. Now the main Boston Bruins are out. After absolutely blowing it. Damn it. The Toronto Maple Leafs go on to win the Stanley Cup. They do. They do. That's unfortunate. That is unfortunate. I have no idea where they are, Bowen. The Bridgeport Islanders win the Calder Cup. Goodness. All right. Well, we know what the cap hit is going to be. Oh, my God. My fucking eye. This is killing me. All right. Well, I'm digging this team. Well, you know, I'm here, but I don't know much about hockey. Nick, that's perfectly fine. All right. Let's see. Who has an expiring deal? Bataglia, Froloff. None of our major defenders. Kapriva is going to want to leave the team, which is highly unfortunate. He was very good in the regular season with 50 points. Only four points in the playoffs, and he wants out. There is nothing I can do about it. Cashman also wants to leave. So uh, I'm not saying those guys were crucial to any potential cup window, but... It certainly would have helped still having them on the team. So that's uh, that's a little bit rough. Retired players include Leon Dreisaitl with an absurd amount of points. Sabanajad, Huberto, and Forsberg. Among others, of course. Among others. Defensively, Nurse, Forsling, Gavrikov. Sanheim all over 500 points. It's Slavin and Pollock up there, too. And goal, Merzlikens, Husso. The Malkin company is Char still around. No, dude, he retires at the end of like season two. Travis Sanheim becomes a coach. All right. To the draft we go. To the draft we go. Buffalo wants to trade that eighth overall pick, but really quickly, like we did last year, we might as well see. Kind of what our outlook is. We do not have our first round pick. We got a ton of other picks, though. So Pataglia Richards still shaping up to be our goaltending tandem. Froloff has made no improvement whatsoever in overall. Iliakis isn't that bad. Uh, let's see. Anybody that we're not really overly confident in? Mayorov. Can I get anything for you? I cannot. Can I get anything for Daniel, who is terrible? Fourth rounder is pretty much going to be the best I can do. Anaheim, you got a deal. Is there anybody else I can move on from that's not that good? Apparently not. Again, we've drafted a thousand bajillion goalies. On defense, we know we'll be letting go of Gerard. Can't get anything for him. Albert Schauser, to be honest, I mean, I know he has an X factor. He has not improved in overall at all recently. I'm not against moving on from him to see what Brodeen can do. Even though Brodeen doesn't have an X-Factor. Nobody wants Albuchauser, though. Does anybody want Brodeen? Actually, we might want to hold on to Brodeen, just in case. Uh, defensively. Can we move on from Sove here? We cannot. Can we move on from Palemeyer? At least get something for draft picks back. Anybody on a one-year deal? Because I don't really want to have to flip somebody. Guess we're not moving Peelmeyer. Guess we're not. Why the fuck are low sevens valuable? It makes no sense. This game is so broken. It's unbelievable. It is absolutely unbelievable that low sevens have any form of value whatsoever. I will gladly take advantage of it right now. But I try to trade medium sevens, and they say no. But a low top six? Oh, yeah, we need that. 
Give me a low top six, baby. That's my missing piece. Absolutely insane. Just so, so bad. Finn NHL, thank you for the follow. Welcome to us making fun of this horrible franchise mode. Is horrible a strong word? Probably. But in comparison to how good it could be, well, there you go. We'll just keep flipping our garbage here. If that's if they're going to take it, I'll do it. I don't care at this point. We are obviously in pure desperation mode at this stage to just get this team somewhere, anywhere in terms of success. Dallas at number one takes Montgomery, who's only a 79. So either they goofed or this draft is terrible. And we simply don't know yet. This low seventh is also available. My God. So I guess we'll find out sooner rather than later as to what that situation is. I love it. These medium sevens? Nah, we don't want them. Give me that low seventh, though. We'll take that guy. Like I said, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. Can I move on from Blake? <laughs> medium four. Who wants a medium four? Oh, <laughs> uh, what about this dude in Hancock? Third and the four. Two thirds. Sure. He's got a decent starting overall, but obviously he won't maintain that. Okay, on the right hand side. Samalinen's our our Posternock replacement. It was worth it to move Posternock to find out that that guy is our guy. We wouldn't have known that potentially otherwise, so that was worth it. Yeah, Raver, it might end up being a baseball night for me. I, I don't know. People are like, hey, I'm down to play, and then people disappeared. So I don't know what happened. We'll play it by ear again for a couple of minutes, but it might end up being a baseball night. Let's see. Lamb, decent overall, but again, his ceiling is incredibly low because of a garbage potential. We'll move him to Columbus. Uh, even Jar is not that good. You know, Raver, I mean, it's, it, it, it could be. It could be. <laughs> not the worst idea in the world. Uh, can we move Martins? Indeed we do, Bowen. Sixth rounder, again. Like, now we're just ending up in a cycle where I'm going to keep flipping people year after year. Pearson was the enforcer, right? So we don't want to move him. Uh, Left-hand side. Nick Robertson, can I move you for anything? 30th overall, I think we got to do it. I think we got to do it. Move Nick Robertson for the 30th overall pick to Pittsburgh. Maybe. Ugh. Like, regular season was a disappointment. In the playoffs, he was a point per game. But yeah, he didn't really show up at the end of that Leafs series. Like, we'd get... Jacques Robidad and probably flip him. Nick, I'm saying goodbye, buddy. I'm saying goodbye. It might leave us a little bit weak on that left-hand side this season. We'll see. We'll see. But we have officially moved on from Nick Robertson and have officially lost the Jeremy Swayman trade. Again, Kopriva did not want to re-sign, which is devastating. And we'll be moving him to the Rangers for a seventh because, again, he didn't want to stay. That left-hand side is now looking damn weak. That is far, far from ideal. So, I, you know, I think it was right to move on from Robertson. I think if there's a top left wing in this draft, we need to target them. And the top left wing in this draft is Rasanen, but he's three years out. Belanger is three years out. Jesus. We don't know anything about Jared Moore. Well, in terms of a top left wing, I don't know if I'm getting my wish on that one. 
Kaznikov might have big tipper. You can't really rely on that. Vandermeer. We might have to work the trade market after this. We might have to because we're not finding that missing left wing at the top half of this draft. It's not going to happen. So we might regret moving Robertson unless somebody really, really steps up. Which seems unlikely. Out of nowhere. Like, we were strong on that left-hand side for a while, and it was the right-wing side that was weak. And now, all of a sudden, here we are. And, uh... I'm not exactly liking our chances of what that side's gonna look like this year. Shit, Calvasari or Cook might end up getting the play. Gonna move Bachman for anything interesting. Two-fourths, might as well. Again, low top six, a terrible potential... Koskinen's okay. Hi, Jack, you beautiful son of a gun. How are you? Thank you for the seven months, man. I'll have to get those fight night rematches in there someday. Uh, can I move Robida for anything? Fourth and a fifth, might as well. Might as well. So we just continue to uh, shuffle the deck with this team. That's really the only way to describe it. Those guys aren't so bad. O'Reilly's terrible. Buyer's never going to make it. Two seconds and Dora Fayev. That's the deal. Two seconds and Dora Fayev from Winnipeg. Move on from Buyer there. And yeah, we're definitely going to have to be a little bit more... Uh, a little bit more aggressive in the free agent market. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, again, signing big free agents hasn't necessarily worked out for us over the years, but we got to find a way to make it work now. Third rounder in Pratt from Chicago. We'll just go ahead and do that. Can I move Pratt off the roster? He's a low nine. Someone will want him. Yep. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Cashman wanted off of the team. Seventh round pick it is. Kind of puts us into an interesting spot down the middle now. Let's see. Sexsmith we can't move on from. Alberts we can't move on from. Bergfist is a low nine. Don't worry. We'll be able to move him. It's Columbus like every time too. That are like, yeah, we, we want him. We want all the low nines. All right. So now in terms of picks, we do have a first. We got a bunch of seconds and thirds, so plenty of room to do some damage in this draft again. We'll have a ton of picks. Uh, right winger. Let's be honest. I mean, I don't need this guy at all. I can't imagine I'd have an easy time trading up to fourth or fifth, but we might as well see what the asking price is. Price in the second, Mahler, Salmaline in the first, and Lawson. Honestly, first and Lawson, that's a that's a deal and a half. Lawson's like 24, isn't he? Lawson's 20. Oh, dude, a deal and a half. It's a first rounder next year and Lawson for the fourth overall pick. <laughs> Done deal. Done deal. That's the easiest trade we'll ever make. That is the easiest trade we'll ever make. So I don't really need that right wing, but goddamn. <laughs> He's fantastic. So is Riley Porter. But considering our scouts have this guy as significantly better. And we've done pretty well with Finns as of late. Sammy Heikinen. Come on down. 79 medium elite. He is tied for the best overall in this draft so far. San Jose. I got all the assets in the world. Are you interested in the deal? Price in a second, Bird, Mahler, Zancanaro, Skula in a second. If we look down the middle, this dude that we'd be drafting would be a center. We have Bird, Price, and Skula. Kadri's already there. So basically drop Skula to get the guy that would be his replacement. I don't remember if Skula wanted out or not. He's an RFA though. If he did, at least most likely he's an RFA. That would be a real mistake to not trade him if he did want out. But I genuinely don't remember. Hmm. 
it would make sense to go with Price, 22 and 38. Go with Bird, Price, this dude that we're about to draft, and like Kadri on the fourth line. He has no puck skills. He's literally just all shot. It's ridiculous. You'd think he'd have more than 27 goals of power play time too, but apparently not. Also, though, apparently shot 15%, so he's just not set to shoot the puck a ton. I can't guarantee that he'll still be a third-line center by the beginning of next year, which means if I don't trade him now and he goes up to a second line, or I'm going to have to trade him eventually anyway. We're going to take that. We're going to take that. And we will trade in Skula for the uh, newer, younger model uh, for Riley Porter of the Mississauga Steelhead. CWP, I could, but I won't. Porter's the pick. He's a 78 medium elite. Not the first time. I think we've had the fourth and uh, fifth overall picks and drafted two forwards, but there we go. We're getting some insurance here. Definitely getting some insurance options. Did Heward? I'm pretty sure Heward was another one that wanted out, right? He might have been an RFA. Anything for him? I don't have to trade him for a seventh. So yeah, right now, we're not looking that bad still. It's just, I have no idea how this team's going to come together. No idea. Ashton's two years out. Rasanen's three years out. Three years, three years. Oh my god. Makinen unconfirmed one year out, but pretty close. Schroeder's NHL ready, but again, the problem, another goddamn right wing. <sighs> so many right wingers, man. There's too much elite level right wing talent. Pressburg, Parise, Baradziak. I mean, the Baradziak trade would be to bring in a, a younger model, essentially. The newer model. He's 22 years old. Won't really be in danger of uh, needing to do anything else. But like hiking in this new guy in case Hayward has to go. Baradziak is the oldest of the bunch. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Of course, we traded Baradziuk or Pasternak to see who was the best of the bunch. Baradziuk appears to be the worst of the group. Oh, goodness, man. I I don't know if that was the right decision. We're about to find out. Stefan Schrader's the guy out of Ingolstadt. He's a 76 medium six. That's not bad. That's not bad. Whether or not that was the right choice, time will tell. I mean, again, with this team, like, we're just, we have so much damn roster turnover that we are just begging to be able to figure this out. Irwin is going to be a DFD two years out. That's not good enough. Do we have anybody else that's NHL ready or super close to it? And the answer so far is no. Hannon might be a medium elite, but. Your eye's gonna drop out. So yeah, dude, I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's it's like my eyelid is spasming. It's awful. It's absolutely awful, but nothing's really nothing's really fixing it. Galena. Right at the end of the round. Is apparently tremendous. One year out, was it? One year out. Keep an eye on them for the higher overall couple of guys who were two years out, which isn't so bad. That's, you know, high 60s, low 70s for a rating. Mark Jelena, also apparently two years out. Monk said his net went out and hasn't come back on. Oof. Oof. All right, I think already at that. Ooh, there is a low elite. Okay, so. So, so, so.
When's our next pick after this? Son of a bitch. When is our next pick after this? Number 30. I think we're good to sim ahead. What do we got? So Galena is there. Let's go for him. Darcy, how good are you? 72 medium top four. That's not bad. Our next pick afterwards is pick 54. So we'll sim to the next round. And try to trade with Carolina here really quickly to move up. Donald, Rita, Galena. How good was Rita? I don't feel like Rita was that good. 59, medium elite, 19. Done deal. Done deal. We're wailing and dealing like mad to try and make this work. Let's go for Brendan Trotter. 67, medium, 4. Mm. Not as good as I was hoping he'd be. There's Schneider who's a massive, massive risk. There's also a couple of confirmed medium fours, but at the same time, they're going to be like 65 overalls. It was Jelena who was the most interesting one. Yeah, I mean, Schneider, unconfirmed two years out. He might be the best of the bunch. Jelena is around pick number 42. Let's go talk to Buffalo. See if we can pull this off. For Mauer or two thirds. Obviously, we'll do the two thirds. No worries. Deal with Buffalo. Let's risk it for Mark Jelena, the grandson of Martin Jelena. He's a 67. It's not too bad. Worth trading up for. Not necessarily based off of who else is there. So that whole uh, one or two years out thing didn't really help. From there, I think we just kind of go with uh, kind of go with the flow here and look for these top-notch dudes that might be left. The mediums and low elites, the best guesses. It's pretty much all we got. We'll sim to pick 54. Let's start seeing who we can get. So the first dude. That we're looking at is Pavel Semenov, the Ukrainian, who is a 63 medium top nine. That is unfortunate. Anybody else? Who's next up on the list? We have Vincent Latang out of Ramuski. He's a low four. Who's next? As we look to hit a bit of a home run here, it's not. Some might say it's a bit of a gamble. Uh, Jimmy Hartman. 57, medium elite. Eh. Pick number 62. God, we have a lot of picks again. I'm probably going to trade a lot of these sevens because I think I'll break the game with the amount of picks I have. Vladimir Vishnevsky. 48, medium starter. Looked like he definitely would have been a medium elite. He is not. Damn it. Uh, who are we going for next? Kubish. Bedrick, 49 overall, medium elite. A 49. That is brutal. How about Justice Winchester, the overager? Medium top six, but a 56 overall. <laughs> oh, man. Who's next? We have the goaltender Boris Froloff, also an overager. Was a medium elite, not sure of the OVR. Let's be honest, it's not going to be that high of an overall. I don't know, a lot of medium elites, but yeah, the OVRs are terrible. These guys are just pure trade value. That's it. That is it. We will go for the low elite, hopefully, Guy Delorier, another overager. If only this was NHL 17 and 18, these overagers would be killing us. What's the overall, lowest overall I've seen? Like a 45 or something like that. I think about a 45 or something like that. Maybe uh, just like an outright 50. Uh, let's go for the center. Jimmy Liston. 57 overall medium elite. Whole lot of trade value, but what good will it do? I do not know. Let's go for Braylon Molly. Low nine. Yuck. 
Uh, let's go for Valeri Nesterov. Low nine. Another pick in round four. Let's go for Martin Versteeg. Low nine. These gamble picks are not paying off. Not going to buy a lottery ticket anytime soon. Graham Sylvester. Another low nine. Not one of these dudes ended up being that good. What about Reese Cardwell? Also pretty shit. So those are all the gamble picks, basically. A uh, couple of guys. This dude's apparently three years out, but he's looking like a low potential option. Let's just take him. Caden Kessler. 61. Mm. You lied. You lied, game. You lied to me. Uh, DeVos. Marcel. He's a low nine. Good God. Good thing is I can trade all these low nines for sixth round picks. Because the AI will go after them every single time. Please tell me that was Andrew Raycroft. It's AJ Raycroft. We can say that the A stands for Andrew. Uh, there is really nobody else who's who's worth going for here. I genuinely think that I have too many trades. Or too many picks and that I need to make trades. I mean, yeah, look at this. Holy God. Okay, I'm going to break the game if I keep all of these picks. I am going to break the game. Even if even if it's for a sixth. Let's not break the game here. And uh, just get rid of a bunch of picks. There we go. Let's just trade down a bunch. Let's do it one more time because I don't trust it. I have broken the draft before and crashed my game from having too many draft picks. I do not want to do the same. I will let the AI make the rest of our picks, though. We still ended up with over two columns worth of picks. And we ended up trading some people that I didn't think we'd end up having to trade, but it made sense, at least from one perspective, to get rid of someone like Skula and bring in somebody else. I mean, Bataglia and Richards are still going to be the goalies. Froloff we're going to let go of. He hasn't improved at all. Um, could end up signing Boychuk if need be. And I guess we might as well. Be our sixth goalie. And then defensively, yeah, Girard's gone. Brodeen will be saying, I, I just don't know if we're going to be able to take that step up at all. I really don't. As we continue on, it's really... It's really starting to look like we're just going to get stuck in a rut. Yeah, Huber did want to leave. So maybe it's a good thing we did pick up Heikinen and Schroeder. They'll be able to play the uh, bottom six for us this upcoming year. I don't know what to make of this team. I really don't know what to make of this team. We're going to be losing Darby as well. So we are incredibly weak on that left wing side. We are looking awful on that left wing side. Can't even sugarcoat it. Down the middle, though, we're still looking okay. It's looking like Kadri and Porter will be stepping up for us. So it might be a case of just seeing what the team can do in their current incarnation, or it might just be worth, um, might just be worth seeing kind of what this team can do, like up till you know, seeing what they can do right now in their current form, and then making trades, or we just improve the team uh, sooner rather than later. And I'm not sure what the answer is. I'm really not.